is a sound. Assalamu alaikum. Hallelujah. Yes, my wonderful compulsory listeners. As I said before, I don't need the disciples like my predecessor, the Lord Jesus, so that his message may reach everyone. <laughs> when I is let me use this type of grammar which is not really I don't want to say I am for the sake of peace when I on the earth I want you to understand I don't need the angelic realm to deliver a message for me because I the ultimate messenger in other words i bring the message the furthest since i as i said i don't want to say i am already cover the whole universe and beyond so i want you understand that I is for the sake of peace the only absoluteness of the union of God in which I descended from my predecessor the Lord Jesus is one of the composition of the union of myself so let me explain something first let me give the date today is the just say for the sake of peace the first of the 8th 2k23 yes so i want to elaborate however before i would like to announce something which is quite significant for someone special among the chosen so on social media you know there is a very unique person I use the word very unique because she used a tattoo on her bosom which symbolize in my heart what I said is gonna happen in 2k24 so such symbol which i truly admired has display of great star <laughs> falling before stars before the stars the great star shall <laughs> the great star shall let me not say shall for the sake of peace the great star <laughs> will fall okay so let me tell you something i want to bring her on the spotlight because great is her faith and i want to teach her something regarding my dimension I do not operate on the basis of faith. I want you to understand something. <laughs> I sound very ungodly in speaking such way. 
However, let me teach you in my dimension. Listen, my glory is the universe. I want you to understand something. What I'm teaching you is because you please me very well with that tattoo that you have. Which symbolize what will take place next year. And I'm going to speak about this shortly. So let me tell you now about how I operate. Listen. Because I love everyone. I tell you what I heard in the spirit. I am not a prophet. I rather call myself, right? Original. I don't work with the, this type of manifestation that say that the spirit of the prophet is subjected to the prophet. So let me explain. The spirit, common S, with a consonant, that's not God. He's subjected to the common P, consonant with the word prophet so I above this type of formula spiritually speaking I capital S consonant for the word spirit of truth therefore I do not call myself a prophet because a prophet operate with a common s listen that's why i do not choose jamaica because i'm proud uh, let me exclude the word um i proud i don't choose jamaica west indies listen i want you to understand what i'm saying i don't fit in also with any agenda because my glory is always whether I chose the agenda for the sake of peace I didn't say or not so listen I always feel all in all without the agenda so I want to explain something further so we are in 365 days for the year 2023 if you did a research see see my track record I rather call myself a seer a seer is a fortune teller a soothsayer as well as a prophet so it's a complex word as I said in one of my messages, Gyad was a seer. <coughs> G-A-D. In Patwa we say God. Listen. So I want you to understand that next year for the Lord which is on my right hand I want you to understand it's just one day according to Ezekiel 4 6 even though it has literally 365 days according to the Gregorian calendar calendar so I want the you to understand top, 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 that next year is around, the day around. of evil yes, guys, guys, guys. If you understand the spirituality in which I'm speaking from. So because I love everyone, I'm telling you what's going to happen. Something weird is going to happen in the heavens that will draw attention. And the spirit says, when I say the spirit, I'm talking about of the union. The word, which is written in 1 John 5, 7. Which is part of the union listen revealed that before the star projection the great star will fall 
I want you to understand that what is going to happen in heaven is something unusual. So when you see something unusual happen in heaven, it's because that event has literally unfolded in the spirit world. And I'm not operating on the basis of faith. Because, let me explain something in a part. Remember that you, my listener, as a human, if you are naturally born, you don't need to hope to lift up your right hand. Because you know that if you lift your right hand up, it just go up. Just like so. So I'm telling you that I do not operate on the basis of faith in what I said going to happen. I know. I don't hope. So I'm telling you something where is going to happen in the here. Next year. 2K24. So let me speak now regarding this year. I said when it reach nine months left in this year 2k23 Leviathan which is a spirit being right which God approved of being the king of the children of pride which literally means is the king of pride so because of this speech saying another one another one hell consider this thing as blasphemous <laughs> I he had to take both and go in places so to preach the gospel so people may hear it and the Bible said also that he was exhausted when I finally arrive on the earth I don't need to go through what he did in the past I don't even need his disciples I don't even need the angels that he had so I can't be emulated so Jordan you also use the word right in one of your message such cannot be duplicated so I tell you very crazy thing going on in the world because of this Leviathan spew from his mouth ministers of flames which will leave the coastline when it reach nine months left in here which would have been from April there was something that happened I don't know if you know Ilsa which came over a Christian country and destroyed a lot of things there and I spoke about Miami so we are still with a number of months left in this year so check I said this before nine months right then Ilsa came on the scene so let me repeat something very important this once more Leviathan this beast of the sea because of the speech of another one which is against the ultimate power which can never be duplicated he spew from his mouth ministers of flame which will leave the coast line and go where Miami Florida is so I'm telling you so I said according to the revelation that no less than two in magnitude going there However, the captain on my left revealed or separately so is a force going there and then 
another one since they asked for another one going there separately nothing about magnitude this is on the side of the captain who is on my left so I want you to understand we have been complaining about the place being hot than all the time that you have experienced and hurt why the place is so hot I didn't do I, I, I have not done yet a research and see what's happening there I'm sure a lot of person get heat stroke I said ministers of flames so this beast he spew from his mouth according to Job 41 flames <laughs> why is the the meteorologist speaking about the climate being hot so I'm telling you not I am sorry I want you to understand such thing right listen for the sake of peace so we still have a number of months left in this year let's see how things will unfold saying, Son of man, when I bring the sword against the land, and the people of that land take a man and make him their watchman, then if this watchman sees the sword coming upon the land, and he does not sound the trumpet, so that the people might be warned, then if the sword comes and takes the life of any man among them, that man shall be taken away in his iniquity. But I will hold the watchman accountable for his life. His blood shall I require at the watchman's hand. Now as for you, son of man, I have made you a watchman. Therefore, hear the words from my mouth and give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked man, O oh, wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn him, that he might turn from his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his sin, but his blood shall I require at your hand. If you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, he will die in his sin. But you, O oh son of man, shall have delivered your soul. Stating what's happening in Hawaii and continues. So sad. The uh, death toll there, 36, and that's could right. go up. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. That's the breaking news we begin with this hour, and it is out of Hawaii, where just catastrophic and unprecedented wildfires, as Victor said, have killed at least 36 people. That death toll is in Maui, and it soared overnight. Bodies were found in the ruins. Take a look at what's left. 
of Lahaina. It's a historic town, a very popular vacation spot. The fast-moving inferno wiped out entire neighborhoods, and people jumped into the ocean to escape the flames. The fire was fueled in part by powerful winds from a hurricane. Take a look at this video obtained by our local affiliate. What you can see there is hurricane force winds whipping palm trees and explosions as a marina and boats go up in flames. Let's take a look at that devastation uh, on the ground. These are just hulls of homes. The neighborhoods, the businesses burned to the ground. Listen to the survivor describe the, the situation. Still get dead bodies in the water floating and on the seawall. They've been sitting there since last night. We've been pulling people out since last night, trying to save people's lives. And I feel like we're not getting the help we need. This is a nationwide issue at this point. Yeah, we need help, a lot of help. We got to get people down here. Veronica Miracle joins us live in Maui, where it is the middle of the night. So you haven't even seen the extent of the destruction. We'll see that when the sun comes up. But what can you tell us being on the ground? That's exactly right, Poppy and Victor. Uh, the death toll information also coming in overnight. So many people here on the island of Maui will be waking up to the news that 36 of their community members, loved ones, friends have died. That fire in Lahaina is one of three fires currently burning on the island here. Firefighting efforts continue as well as search and rescue efforts. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. The view from above is of shock and heartbreak. Oh my gosh. We were not prepared for what we saw. It looked like an area that had been bombed in the war. Wildfires rampaging across the island of Maui. Our entire street was burned to the ground. Decimating homes and businesses. Local people have lost everything. They've lost their house, they've lost their animals, and it's, it's devastating. Lahaina is on fire. The historic town of Lahaina, a popular tourist and economic hub on the island's west side, particularly affected with hundreds of structures impacted. It happened so fast, people stuck in traffic trying to get out and they're, they're slain on, on both sides of the road, like something out of a, a, a horror movie. Most of the fires on Maui fueled in part by violent winds caused by Hurricane Dora churning more than 800 miles away. Those winds now subsiding as the storm pushes away. The primary focus is to save lives and then to prevent human suffering and to mitigate great property loss. State Department crews assisting in efforts to restore communication across the islands and distribute water. With military helicopters aiding in extinguishing the fires. Two CH-47 supporting Maui County. They flew 13 hours, did 58 drops and about 150,000 uh, gallons of water to, uh, to assist with su suppression of the fire. Recovery will be a long road ahead, according to Hawaii's Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke. The damage to the infrastructure, it's not just um, buildings. I mean, these were small businesses that invested in Maui. These were local residents. And, uh, you know, we need to figure out a way to help a lot of people in the next several years. And 11,000 people were flown out of Maui yesterday. Another 1,500 people expected to leave today. Airlines are offering reduced fares. They're also increasing the number of flights. They're trying to get people out. Officials are also asking people to cancel their plans to not come here. They want to save the resources for those who desperately need it. Victor, Poppy. Veronica Miracle, thank you for that reporting from Maui. Joining us now is pilot and director of operations for Air Maui Helicopters uh, is Richie Olson. Uh, Richie, can you hear me? It looks like we have a bit of an image yeah. problem. You can hear me good? Okay. All right. We'll figure I the pictures out. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. um, the, the images we're seeing from, from Maui, the damage is catastrophic. We, we understand that. But as someone who has flown over Maui for more than 50 years, what does it feel like to see it this way? Well, when we went up in the air uh, the other morning to see what kind of damage there might have been, we never suspected that we'd see what we saw. We thought that we, from the previous night, we were watching the news and seeing the, some fires in Lahaina and so forth, and we thought that we'd, we would see some damage. But as we approached the south shore, the south end of Lahaina and proceeded to head up the coast, 
uh, we were devastated by by what we saw. It was just uh, it was heartbreaking because I've lived here most of my life, and the entire town of Lahaina is basically was burnt to the ground. The entire historic area, uh, Front Street, all the shops, uh, people's homes, hundreds of homes. It was um, the other pilots that were with me to to view this. The, we looked at each other in disbelief. We could not believe what we were seeing. It was just, it was shocking, heartbreaking, and we're, our heart goes out to the, so many people that are displaced and homeless at this time. And we're looking at some of your video now. Uh, we've spoken to a couple of guests here who are still looking for family members, hoping to hear from friends. Uh, all of your friends and family members there accounted for? Uh, they are. Uh, yesterday at work, we have had some employees that weren't able to be, get in touch with some of their family members, but they have now been uh, found and contacted. But, um, you know, these, this is a long-term uh, situation here. These people that lost their homes, we have over 600 people in the War Memorial Stadium, the gym. We have people in our churches seeking refuge, and they have they have no place to go. They're going to have to be, have some kind of temporary uh, housing set up for these people. It's it's just it's a disaster like Hawaii has never seen. Yeah. And listen, I'll, I'll say I'll preface this by saying it is a, a secondary or, or tertiary consideration after life and the, the homes that people have lost, every tangible thing they have. But uh, Maui relies upon tourism. You are in the tourism industry and what this means for business uh, and and uh, the ability to sustain this community. When you look at the destruction, how long and how badly has the community been hit and hurt? Oh, I, I don't know that Lahaina itself will actually recover from the situation, especially with the loss of, his, of the historic area of the downtown and Front Street and all the shops and businesses where all the local people that live there that work, hundreds and hundreds of people that work in that in that. Lahaina town area, you know, that there's, it's just leveled to the ground, dust and ashes at this time. So this is going to be a long-term recovery for uh, the economy, for that, for the entire island, let alone Lahaina itself. Well, Richie, it's a little after 2 a.m. Uh, there, and uh, I uh, hope that we can reach out to you again if you go back up and get more pictures uh, showing us what is there. Um, Poppy just spoke with uh, John Kirby from the White House saying that there is federal help on the way. Uh, we're all thinking of you there uh, in Hawaii. Richie Olston, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Like, we're having such a good conversation. <laughs> and I didn't even ask you our theme question. Okay, what's which, the theme? Which is, you know, when did you come to develop your own relationship with God? Okay. Um, what happened? Take us back to that day. Because, you know, many times we, are, we grew up in a church or we grew up in religious households and we're just doing what we're told, but we really don't know God for ourselves. Right. So what was that experience like for you? Okay. That's a good one. I grew up in a Christian home and also my grandparents on both sides were Christians. So I saw Christianity from the beginning. I think the Chicago move was really nice. Yeah. Nighttime. And I was going to say, like, you, you kind of touched on that. Like, I'm when you. Telling you, yeah. But how was that move? Like, did you see God in a new way? I did. How? So the minute I arrived, which is so strange, but the minute I landed, it was like I, I knew right away something was different. I could, the air smelled different there. Mm. It just felt different. And then as I started to just like acclimate to a new city, I mean, it's a large city. It is. So, you know, I quickly started to realize that the Holy Spirit, who I had never really known, so I knew, I knew of him. But I had never known how amazing he was and who he was. So I started to like really spend more time and research who is the Holy Spirit? What does he do? Like, how do I access him? And I grew to love him and I depend on him every single day. That's how I'm guided. That's how I'm able to discern, to know when to speak, when not to speak. So 
that's how it all began. And then, um, so that was four years ago. And mm -hmm. then what was another giveaway was um, I started to see numbers. Mm, let's talk about which numbers. is so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because um, numbers yes. have been demonized a little bit. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so it can get a little tricky, but it let's can. talk about it. So, because I start seeing numbers too as well. Okay. Like which I see this. Number? I see um, eleven ten. Okay. I see eight nineteen. Okay. I see eleven eleven. I see two twenty two. Okay. I see the, the secret. Yeah. That's, I see um, twelve twenty two. Okay. I see one eleven. Okay, so it was two two two, and it was four four four. Those are those are the yeah. two numbers. Yeah, five five five. Yeah. So here's the funny thing: when I first moved to Chicago, I was prophesied over. So my grandmother, mm. this is what I'm saying. Like, can you share the prophecy or not? Yes, I what can definitely it? share it. Okay. But well, let me give you the background. All right. So my grandmother, okay. she was a prayer warrior. Yeah. And it was prophesied over me that I had the same spirit. And I remember hearing that and thinking, oh, I don't even know what this man's talking about. I mean, I just heard it and just didn't really understand. I don't know what that means. But it started to live out. That's when I started to see the numbers. That's when I started to say, oh, hey, wait, what is this? Why am I seeing all Same this stuff? Thing. Same with you? I was prophesied to at a young age. Yeah. But I didn't start seeing the numbers until I moved to Cali. And I was in California for five years. Okay. I mean, I see him, but that's kind of when I really like saw God in a different way, like okay. seeing miracles and things. Wow. Um, but then I also was seeing numbers. Okay. And um, but when I see the numbers, like before, uh huh. Um, when I first start seeing them, I would just like look up Bible verses. Yeah. Like same here. I'm like, oh, and then those Bible verses will be speaking directly to exactly, me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly right. So what, but, what was your experience? But just like you, so, so that was like, that was the prophecy. Then I started seeing all these numbers, but it's the same ones. Then I started to screenshot when I would see them because I don't mm. know why I would do that, but I just, I started because I was just like, what is this? Why do I keep seeing that? Now I didn't tell you this part, but I've always been fascinated by numbers and I still am. So mm. as a kid, I remembered birthdays. We had a rotary phone. My grandmother did. So I remembered numbers. I don't know if you remember prior to cell phones, but I knew numbers. I still know my home phone number from when I was a kid. Like mm. numbers just always fascinated me. Birthdays I remember as well. So anyway, the family would come to me and say, what's that person's birthday it's just like I just knew it very easily so that wasn't the shocking part the shocking part for me was there was this fear in me and the fear was I didn't I didn't want to get into angel numbers so I knew that I knew okay, enough. that's what they are called the angel, angel numbers. numbers so yeah. I knew enough to know that there's good and there's evil, evil. I just didn't know exactly what that meant so uh yes there, there are angel numbers which tie into like horoscopes and new well, age thinking and the, you know, and here's the thing, you know, that God revealed to me is that mm -hmm. there's always going to be a familiar spirit. Right. Like God is the creator and everything that God created was good. And mm -hmm. God did create numbers. It's just the enemy Amen. turns it around for evil. Amen. I mean, there's even a book of numbers in the Bible. Amen. So yeah. even when Jesus was born you know the three wise men they were following the stars so Amen. everything you know the enemy tried to demonize and make it into evil but everything that god originally created was good so we mm -hmm. just have to take that back um and you know i do hear about angel numbers but there is something about numbers god created numbers so we're not just right. going to totally disregard it right like, he's not 100%. the ultimate creator because you have to remember, too, that he speaks to us differently. That was the way he spoke to me. He spoke to me all the time through numbers. Exactly. Now, get into dreams. I can't. That's I don't I don't remember mine for some mm. reason. I don't really. I'm not going to say I don't dream. And dr much. Dreams are the same way because exactly. you can have a dream from God and then you can have a dream from the enemy. You can have a right. demonic dream. Right. So you right. just have to have discernment. I feel like Amen. you with everything you have to have discernment because there's yeah. always a good side and then there's the flip side. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to go too far off into the dark side. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you're yes. going to have discernment into knowing, you know, like right. what's is this of God or is this not of God? Yep. 
and and that was what this whole thing was about. So the numbers are to get your attention. That's, is that that's what, what is it that? is. Okay. It's to get your attention. So it got my attention. Okay. And then I went to the old tried and tested preachers. So my grandmother would have TBN on and I started that route because I didn't want to fall into new age anything. I, right. I was afraid of that, to be right. honest. So I would go to... Because it's so easily done. Like you can be in oh, new yeah. age and not even know you're in new age. And, and I know. was like that at that point. And then... Oh, really? Yeah, and God revealed to me, like, this oh. is with the whole, um, just like with the whole manifestation, like writing things down oh, yes. with the moon the or like, um, yeah, like that wasn't, God's like, no, you just need to trust me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Like, I also, too, I was like, wait. But I was this? like, oh, this is kind of like witchcraft. And you can easily, because witchcraft is just manipulating, trying mm-hmm. to manipulate and control, it is. you know, the timing of something by yep. doing a physical thing. Right. And God's like, no, 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 no. You just yep. have to trust me. And then. You got it right. Yeah. And so, but I didn't know. And, right. you know, there's many people out there that are into things. And that's like, that's not God. That's the world. That is the world. And that that was my biggest concern. So I prayed hard. I said, Lord, show me. Like, why am I seeing this? And so eventually he led me to a ministry that I'm a part of now mm. that she does prophetic numbers. And that wow. was the saving grace. So that, so there's angel numbers, which is, that's the enemy. Yeah. And then the prophetic numbers. That is what I gravitate to. And I, I'm going to be honest, I think to like, don't get caught up in that stuff. It's not the numbers. That's not what it's about. It's about maybe there's a reason that the Lord wants your attention or he's trying to get you to see something or communicate. So I think sometimes we get dependent on the number and that's not what it's really about, to be honest with you. Yeah. And the only, um, the only thing you need to be dependent on is God. The word. And God, yeah. just because he talked to you through numbers one day doesn't mean he's going to talk to you through numbers every single time. Exactly. Like you just have to yeah. be, you know, in alignment with the Holy Spirit, tapped in. And then however he chooses, to, even if a person comes up and says exactly what you needed to hear in right. that moment, right. that's God speaking to you because he sent that, you know, he's speaking through the vessel. Amen. And so that's why you shouldn't be dependent on just one form, prophetic right. words prophetic yep. numbers anything because god can speak to you through anything or anyone and it's not going to mm-hmm. be the same each time and i feel like he does that intentionally like you just he have does. to be have a relationship with me right and i'm going to lead you and guide you in the way you need to go 100 percent. i i mean i think you get it but i do believe that's how he begins to reveal the people that he wants to take to a deeper yeah, because I definitely like I see them. I still see the secret synchronicities, and maybe I uh-huh. you know saw them before, but I just wasn't aware. Right, right, and that that's that's what it is. Your awareness begins to increase, and the the closer you move to the to the Lord. So to answer your question, that was when I knew my relationship with with Christ had started to change. Mm. I was no longer just, and I I mean I. I, I was always a Christian, but yeah. I really understood, wow, this is what having a relationship means. Right. What does like, it mean to you? It means, like, I cannot live without you. Mm-hmm. I will not make a decision without your cons- I will not. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much, if it's a family member, I will still have the same stance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray on that. I'm going to, I'll let you know. And I go to the Lord, even if I know the answer is no or yes, I still humor him because it's just that relationship and respect, mm-hmm. that reverence. Yeah. And that's what I think that fear is missing nowadays in churches where people, they make God what they want him to be. He's this genie that like does what I want when I want. And he's, and then I just take his word and sprinkle pieces of it in there to make it, you know, make me feel better about myself. It's like, no, that's not the word of God. And if it's you, God, tell it to me raw. I can yeah. handle it because you, you're going to make a way for me to mm. like navigate, to change. And he has given me some hard things. He has. <laughs> like what? Oh, my goodness. This last um, this last quarter here uh, telling me to let go of a man that I loved. <sighs> that hurt. It's painful. That one was hard. I've done that. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to kind of let him go. <laughs> And then we're going to see how this ends up. And he let me know. All right. And he. And but now the, 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 you know, it, the cord has been cut. Fully, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. he's gone. But yeah. 
But I'm just saying, like, that was the biggest test ever because he knew I loved that that guy. It was mm. a different person. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a different person. But but how many of us are yeah. in situations yeah. like we love this person? Yeah. And then God is telling us to let them go. That was the first time I had ever audibly heard him say, let, let this person go. Oh I was my. just like, what? But here's the cool part, Jordan. The minute I did that, all of this started to come into fruition. I kid you not. I would not be here if I didn't let that relationship. Hallelujah. So wonderful, precious audience. As I said, if you should go throughout the world and look where you have like a temple, sometime you may find some facility gigantic having thousands of people gathering so to hear the message of whoever will be delivering the message However, in my dimension, I surely do not need such type of manifestation because when I on the earth, the fullness fulfilling biblical John 14 verse 17, I do not need such tangible audience for I already the absoluteness in all souls. So I just want you to understand that I am not God. Neither am I the Lord Jesus, who is my predecessor, as well as I am not the Holy Spirit. And to go even further, I am surely not Satan. So, as I said before, I original. In the name of Aaron. So, not the Aaron that Moses knew. For he was just an ordinary person. He had people congregating in the synagogue. So that they may hear the word. However, because I am the absolute component of everyone who is alive and that will be born shortly I do not need such type of manifestation where people come to hear my word in a particular location so I was still in Jordan Thorpe which is very important because of the tattoo she has on her bosom which signify what will take place next year before the stars 
a great star shall fall. Now let me say for the sake of peace, before the stars, the great star will fall. So such is the American broken English. Will. So let me explain. I even said that before this year finished in September, I was telling my friend Tony that something will emerge on the radar, on the satellite, which is disastrous. And I'm talking about September next month 2k23 so this is from the spirit of leviathan because many of these who claim that they are really satanists which are not since they are following the pope we have things when speaking about rodents you are following the pope because pope Benedict, his name is Rat Singer. However, he died this year. I was going somewhere to the mall at that location of Jamaica, Third World Crocodile, West Indies. And I saw a huge white bird lift up his hand in the hair should I say his wing rather in the hair and then I saw that something like a rodent run away from the location where that one white huge bird was that actually I think had delivered him up then I was very irated and I spot at such creature and he was about to throw himself off into the gully because he discovered my rage so what I want you understand after such experience suddenly I heard the breaking news that Pope Ratzinger has died now my question is why is the sixth empire when I say six, I'm talking about those by code who love wear red, who serve the devil. Why is it that they are using these creatures when Ratzinger is the father figure of all these? That's why his name is Ratzinger. He's a pope and he died. In the spirit world, he was defeated. Why don't you use the most powerful being even the leviathan beast because you see what happened look what he did in hawaii i said that he spew from his mouth ministers of flames what i want you to understand miami is within proximity I want you to understand that a lot of people are having sunstroke right now. The spirit revealed me. The captain gave me this revelation. A lot of people literally fainted because of the tremendous heat wave that is flooding the atmosphere coming from the coastline. As I was telling you, the spirit of Leviathan is infuriated because of this continual speech about another one. Since, as I said, the Lord Jesus, my predecessor, he has to take both to go around preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Because he's not, he was not absolute. In other words, he was not the fullness that fills all in all. As you can see, for an example, myself. So let me tell you, 
you cannot replace a power that doesn't need to follow the Lord Jesus because all the Satanists are following Jesus Christ's way. Because none of these Satanists are the fullness that fills all in all. So that's the reason why hell is raging all over. We have still not completed all the months which is in this year 2k23 we are just in the eighth month what about the ninth month what about the tenth month what about the eleventh month and what about the last month december how the things will happen what will unfold because thus far seems like a living hell already so I'm telling you something right now just obey you say that you serve Satan then you cannot talk of another another is two it's a repetition It's secondary when you said another, just like when you said other. It is moving away from the previous. You are giving addition, which make it two, no longer one, when you said another. So, let's see what will emerge on the satellite September. Something will emerge on the satellite which is disastrous. Something new. Remember the word. N-E-W. Biblical Revelation 5 verse 13. Which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Of the kingdom of hell. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, no time is left. Allow me to introduce to you, to everyone, of course, this new song, which is bubbling hot right now. It's already. Overflowing
seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. 
For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated, that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Hello, my divine kings and queens. I wanted to say something real quick because I don't know if y'all picked it up in my previous message. I told y'all that y'all got people that are watching you in shock and awe and regret. The ones who are watching you in shock are the ones who went against you. The ones who are watching you in awe are the ones who always believed in you. And the ones who are watching you in regret are the ones who know they burnt that bridge so bad that it ain't no coming back to you. But all in all, you overcame and you a winner and you're a conqueror and you're God's warrior. And he got bigger and better things set and prepared for you. So get ready. This beast, he spew from his mouth, according to Job 41, flames. Why is the, the meteorology speaking about the climate being hot? So I'm telling you, not I am, sorry. I want you to understand me such thing right listen for the sake of peace so we still have a number 
of months left in this year. Let's see how things will unfold. I spoke to you before. When I say spoke to you, everyone about such subject. The spirit of Leviathan, which is approved by my supreme self. So let me make this short as possible, being direct. So consider this topic as Biblical Peace and Dragons 2 The Upgrade For the complete topic Biblical Peace and Dragons Praising the God Two. The upgrade. So this is just saying that this is the second part. So I want you to understand now. In the first part, I told you about how everything that the Lord made praises God. And the passage which I used was Biblical Psalm 148 and I give vivid description bear in mind no mouse is mentioned because the mouse doesn't matter to my supreme self what matter is the powerhouse of things let me explain something was captured by Fernando Barga who shared the picture the mind of my Instagram. supreme self mind is superior to that of a mouse what Leviathan can make happen in minutes a mouse cannot make happen in minutes Leviathan can destroy cities in minutes using catastrophe so I just want you to understand Hell is proud. So hell do not want to be belittled. So this is just saying that this is the second part. So I want you to understand now. In the first part, I told you about how everything that the Lord made praises God. And the passage which I use was Biblical Psalm 148 and I give vivid description. Bear in mind, no mouse is mentioned because the mouse doesn't matter to my supreme self. What matter is the powerhouse of things. Let me explain something. The mind of my supreme self is superior to that of a mouse. What Leviathan can make happen in minutes, a mouse cannot make happen in minutes. Leviathan can destroy cities in minutes using catastrophe. So I just want you to understand. Hell is topic biblical beasts and dragons praising the God to so this is just saying that this is the second part so I want you to understand now in the first part I told you about how everything that the Lord made praises God. 
and the passage which I used was Biblical Psalm 148 and I give vivid description bear in mind no mouse is mentioned because the mouse doesn't matter to my supreme self what matter is the powerhouse of things let me explain something the mind of my supreme self is superior to that of a mouse what Leviathan can make happen in minutes a mouse cannot make happen in minutes Leviathan can destroy cities in minutes using catastrophe so I just want you to understand hell is proud so hell do not want to be belittled hell praise God you can see in Psalm 148 the Bible said all deeps deeps has to do with a void which is below this realm and if you follow the Bible in the book of Revelation the bottomless pit is among such now I want to clarify something about my predecessor right now there are souls in the deep and I'm going to explain so the gospel in the first epistle of Peter first epistle of Peter chapter 3 verse 18 the subtopic Christ example of suffering now verse 18 says for Christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit verse 19 by which also went and preached unto the spirits in prison no I pause right here so my predecessor when he left his body he went and preached to the spirits that were in prison so there's a place that was created by my supreme self for many of these that we call fallen angels however because of the rebellion just like the agenda as I said I'm not following the agenda many people made this not knowing the scripture perfectly and compelling the glory of God to follow how can you being born billions of years after the earth was created and then trying to force God to follow your egoistical plan without knowing the scripture perfectly you think that the supreme being who create all things my supreme self will follow such arrogant set of people let me explain something it's like you are saying that if God doesn't follow you he will die I want you to understand this and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen I'm sorry for the soul who is compelling the creator of the whole universe that even made this person who is compelling using the agenda for God who give oxygen to the earth to follow him or to follow his group 
Let me tell you something what's going to happen with these souls who's compelling the king of the universe, the God of gods. God is going to destroy all of these people. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Even your family is going to destroy. I'm telling you what my supreme self revealed to me. He said about John F. Kennedy, you thought he was the beast and you assassinated him. Why is it that he's not resurrected? The Bible said the beast, deadly wound was healed until now John F. Kennedy is still dead. And about Pope John Paul II, he was shot. He didn't die. However, he's dead now. How is it that he is not show himself as the beast? So there are a lot of things going on which is confusion and you are putting people life at risk because of your ignorance of the word of truth which is the word of God. Because of this, the captain said that. Let me tell you the captain. And even Michael, the archangel, confirmed he's going to destroy these type who are making the word of God of none effect. So because of such thing, I know the truth that I must not follow the agenda. I don't need the agenda. I feel all in all. I don't need to follow Jesus. Because I am part of the union. Jesus always, not as the name Jesus, has the word manifested himself. In fact, this year I heard the footstep walking in the pathway in the house. I literally heard his footstep audible sound not vision or dream i'm talking about so the word is very much active he's part of my union i told you i am not god i am not jesus i am not the holy spirit i am not satan you people want me to fit in with a character that you think i should become listen i original i just want you to know this vividly i don't need to become any absolutely original me yet still part of the union just like this great being that descended from heaven that nobody know the name of in the book of revelation Whose glory fill the whole earth. Just like Melchizedek in the Bible. Nobody know such character. Yet, he seems like God Almighty. Yet, he's called a servant of the Most High God. There are things that we cannot comprehend. Just like me. Totally, quote unquote, new. Yet truly original. So I just want you to understand. The Lord made foolish the wisdom of this world, just like the Bible says. So. He went and preached to those who were in prison. The spirits, not the human being. He's talk, I'm talking about the spirit that you have. So those who create the agenda, you have a spirit. Where your spirit is going after you finish your work on earth. Ask yourself the question, and where your family spirit are going after they had followed your plan. Because... According to what I have heard in the spirit, there is anger. And that's why the universe is heating up the whole realm that we're on. 
making the place hot and there is no solution for such heat. Listen, 2K24 is the worst. I'm telling you. So, I don't want to say I'm. For the sake of peace, I is telling you. So, let's go into the passage that speak about the deep. So, let me tell you something that's going to happen with those who are born in my dispensation. There will be so much crying in the afterlife. Bitterly, even those who consider themselves important above all. I just want you to understand what the Lord showed me in the spirit. He's going to put your family together with you in a place reserved, which is an eternal place, which is beyond this realm. And I'm going to show you in the Bible. It's called deep, a place of everlasting punishment. I will tell you that pray that you do not fulfill anything arrogantly, not knowing the scripture perfectly. Because if you go against the glory of, of God, there is only one destiny for such person and it's eternal damnation. So one, let me explain. 35 of Psalm says in verse 6, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in the heaven and in earth, in the seas, and all deep places. I pause right here. So you see there are realms in which he functioned in. It mentioned the heaven. It mentioned the earth, which is the inferior. He mentioned the seas. And it mentioned all. A-L-L. -L, deep places which includes the bottomless pit so i'm telling you they'll say for the sake of peace i is telling you if there's such a way i can express for the sake of peace so those who are arrogantly going against the glory of god he said that he will bind you with your family in the eternal place of punishment they shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth Remember, the time is limited on earth. We are not immortal. We are mortals. Therefore, we have a set time to leave this vessel that we have. To go according to what you make happen for yourself. You arrogantly go against the glory of God. And those who go with you shall go in this place which I have just read deep so let's show you what jesus did in the past he went there and preached oh i have said that before closing off let me read luke chapter 8 verse 27 i want you to understand this no demon at all want to go to the deep there was in the time of my predecessor legion which entered <laughs> a part let me say entered a man right he was possessed and he lived in the tombs also went on the mountains the bible said that such person met the Lord and start worshiping him so when he's about just before he cast out the demon he asked him his name and he said his name is Legion 
So Luke 8 verse 27. I'm going directly. It says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which are devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Now verse 28. And when he saw Jesus, he cried aloud and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Now verse 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for often times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bonds, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Verse 30 And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Now, verse 31, I conclude. Remember, I told you this before the time come. You have no excuse. You cannot say that if you didn't know. So I'm telling you that there is a terrible place reserved after this life for those who arrogantly go against the glory of God. Just as how paradise is reserved for those who obediently follow him which is my supreme self listen verse 31 to confirm that even the demon that many of you follow him he doesn't want to go there because he knows how terrible the place is no demon wants to feel eternal pain verse 31 said and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep remember as I was telling you that the Lord does whatever pleases him in the heaven in the earth in the seas and in wow. all deep reason why the word mentioned all because there are different levels of deep there is a deep which is worse than all deep and I'm going to show you next. So those in my dispensation, I want to tell you now before the time come. And then don't call me a prophet when you see your soul go there. I tell you because you blaspheme. I am not a prophet. I told you before, I capital S. So I'm going to show you the worst deep. There are levels. Let me show you the worst and I finish right here. So, Biblical Revelation 9, verse 1, it says, The fifth trumpet, it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. Verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which had not the seal of God in their foreheads. So let me pause right here. So while I was in the house I felt a finger right on my forehead in the center a vertical sign I don't want to explain this above the way I've explained it just a single stroke in the center of my forehead I was not dreaming I was actually around the table in the kitchen standing up and my forehead started to vibrate and I felt the sensation of a finger writing on my forehead so I just want to explain this as a testimony as well 
So listen to what I'm saying. Not I is saying for the sake of peace. So this is the bottomless pit. And here what it has. Locusts who are like scorpions. So it's a place that is like a furnace. So apart from the fire, you have spirit that will torment you. Fire is already terrible. If you are cooking, put your hand on the heat and see if it, is, if it doesn't hurt your flesh and how quick you remove your hand. Imagine you are immersed in this furnace. Your soul cannot die. And you are chained up. And you have these locusts eating you alive. Can you bear such thing? After arrogantly going against the glory of God. For example, go against me. Let me tell you something. The afterlife is truly payback. No demon want to go there. Even though they use many of you to go against the truth. The demon himself doesn't want to go there. He rather you go there for him. Because no demon can endure pain forever. Not even my predecessor, Jesus, he wanted to endure pain. So imagine a mere mortal like you. Can you bear such thing that even Jesus himself didn't want to face? That's why he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane to let the cup pass away. In fact, his soul was not leaving hell. He went and preached to the souls, to the spirits actually, not souls, the spirits that were in the place. The Bible said from the time of Noah, many of these died and their, soul, their spirits were there. So when my predecessor came, he went there in the spirit world and preached to these. So I'm asking you a question. Can you bear the judgment that is reserved in the afterlife? Because even the demon that you conjure up, he doesn't want to go there. As much as all he has power over your life, he doesn't want to go there. So think about what I'm saying because what I'm saying will happen. Not maybe, for sure. You will experience what I'm telling you. I'm going to give you a short testimony. In the year 2016, going to 2019, I was in the hospital and there was a man in front of me. It was in the day, not in the night. He was crying for water so much. He even calling on the nurse for water. Let me speak in the American way because I love the American broken language above all other languages. So he spoke for water, crying aloud for the nurse. However, he started crying about fire burning him. He was not yet dead. He was on the bed. Remember, it was in the day about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. He started crying. And then he started crying about open the gate. He mentioned the name of somebody that he knew by the name Agatha. He was pleading, he was beseeching her for her to open the gate for him. He remember he was just on the bed, the hospital bed. So what is going on there with his spirit? I have an idea what is happening. The same thing I'm telling you about that will happen with you shortly. That is blaspheming God. You cannot force God to follow your agenda. You have made mistake with John F. Kennedy. Why is it that his dead woman is not healed as yet? You have made an error also with Pope John Paul II. How is it that Pope John Paul II's body is still laid dead? You see that the second message, as I told you before, in Psalm 2 verse 4, the Lord, which is one capital L, the consonant followed by the common letters, O-R-D, shall put the heathen in derision. So he had put you in derision because you believe in the second message, which is the gospel. The new covenant is the second message. 
The first is the old covenant. Why you don't focus on the book of Daniel that speak about the ancient of days? Because I have one testimony with this manifestation. I saw a man came, not a dream I'm telling you about, with clouds. And he seated right in front of me. He was so bright. Listen. The Bible said in Daniel 7 verse 13. And in the night vision I saw one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. And came to the ancient of days. So I don't even really want to go further more. This happened. That I'm telling you about in about here 2015 going up to 17 I saw this when I was around the table why you don't focus on the, the primary message which is the Old Testament regarding the future instead of the secondary message which is the New Testament which also speaks of the future so you chose to follow the book of Revelation instead of the book which comes before it which is the book of Daniel Daniel is the first book that speaks about the last days in such great details that you hear about the beast same as you heard about the beast in the book of Revelation and this subtopic this topic is biblical beasts and dragons praising my supreme self so just endure this message you may revisit it this message as well amen Biblical Revelation 5 verse 13 Which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth Of the kingdom of hell Hallelujah Ladies and gentlemen, no time is left. Allow me to introduce to you, to everyone, of course, this new song, which is bubbling hot right now. It's already. Overflowing Now, let the, the human 